Now, when you're building a website, one of the key things you're going to use throughout the entire website is typography. And this can be one of those areas that, if you're not careful, can grow massively without you even realizing it, which can have a massive impact upon the load time of your website. So today we're going to take a look at how we can address that, reduce those file sizes, optimize what we're doing, and just make our lives just a little bit easier. So how are we going to do this? Well, let me show you. Now, before I get started, I want to give full credit to Jeffrey over at Lightbox for creating a very in-depth video on how to optimize various different aspects. While I'm not going to go over everything that he covers, I'm going to touch upon some things, but I would 100% recommend you go and take a look at that video. I will link it in the description down below. There's some great information in there. Okay, so with that being said, let's take a quick look at what we're starting off with, and then we're going to go through various different ways in which we can optimize our workflow and see what we actually end end up with. So I've tested this website out and as you can see we've got just under a quarter of a megabyte for our typography. Now this is massive considering we're only actually using one typeface for the entire website and just a couple of basic versions of that particular font. So let's see if we can bring that down and just speed up our overall website just a little bit. Now, this is a simple example but you could easily start to rack up megabytes of typography if you're not careful. So this is the site that we're going to be using. It's a typical, simple blog setup with just some typography, images, and so on. So if you are going to retrospectively edit the typography and the fonts that are being used on your website to speed things up if you haven't done it when you're building it, there's a little tool I want to introduce you to just so you can check out what's actually being used, not necessarily what you've uploaded. It's what's called what the font. So if you use a Chrome based browser, you can simply use what the font, install it, and then all you need to do is enable it by clicking on it. And then you can come over any font on your website, click, it'll tell you what font it is, what size or weight it is, all those kinds of good things. So you can see this is Barlow 400. Click on this one, Barlow 400, come underneath, Barlow 400. Barlow 400, so we can see what we're using here. I also know that in some places I'm using a different, slightly different weight of this, but once you kind of know what you're using, then you can make a note of this and get rid of anything that doesn't fall into it and also optimize what format of fonts you're using. So let's take a look at doing that next. Now, for my example, I'm going to be using Bricks Builder, but this holds true no matter what you're using, whether you're using Elementor, anything like that, anywhere you can upload custom fonts, even using a third-party plugin to be able to give you this functionality, they're all going to operate in fundamentally the same way. So don't think this is a Bricks tutorial. It's not. It's just I'm going to demonstrate it inside Bricks. You use whatever tools you're using and you're comfortable with. So as you can see, I've got four different fonts already uploaded. It's all the Barlow font, and we've got various different weights, 300 through to 800. You may have even more inside here. And if we click to edit any of these, you can see in this example, we've got three different formats we can use. We've got TTF or true type fonts, which is kind of probably the oldest and most commonly known typography setting, especially if you come from a print or design background, TTF or true type fonts are going to be something you are very accustomed to. The only downside is they tend to be pretty large. Now, there are some other options like SVG and so on. Jeffrey covers those in his videos to so check that out. But generally, you're not going to need to use those because they are much more legacy formats than we need to take into consideration. So unless you're supporting really old browsers and you have to support those like Internet Explorer and so on, basically, I would generally recommend ignore them completely unless you have to use them. Now, remember, if you're getting value from this video, why not hit that thumbs up button just to tell YouTube that you like this kind of content. But if you're not enjoying it, well, you can hit the thumbs down button twice, as that works pretty well, too. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe button to be notified when new videos like this are released. Anyway, let's get back on with the video. So true type fonts, you can see this is what I currently have. Let's remove that. And you can see you've got this WAF and WAF2. These are more modern typography formats, which means that the files are much more compressed. If you consider things like JPEGs and PNGs and WebP and so on when it comes to images, each one of those has better compression whilst retaining great image quality, and they're supported by more and more browsers. Old legacy browsers probably won't, but let's be honest about it, they probably don't care so much if they're still using those old browsers. So you can choose between WAF and WAF2 files. 
Generally, I would say if you want maximum support using one of these, WAF is probably fine. However, more and more browsers are going to be supporting this WAF 2 format. Therefore, you're going to get smaller file sizes and great support. However, if you want to, you could easily upload both and then you could have a fallback for older browsers. More modern browsers would use the WAF 2 format. Up to you. In this example, we're only going to concentrate on the WAF 2 format. But how do we get them? There's a couple of ways in which you can do this. Generally, Google Fonts is probably going to be the main place you're going to get your fonts from. And the last thing you want to do is actually use the link through to those Google Fonts because of, well, GDPR compliance and so on. You don't want to do it. If you're a Bricks user, you can easily handle that by coming to your Bricks settings, coming to the Performance tab, and just choose the option to disable Google Fonts. Especially if you're handing this off to a client, you don't want them to have access to those additional fonts to start using them, and then you just have all kinds of problems. Keeping control over those fonts is the easiest way to go about it. So ensuring you've done that, the next thing you need to do is get those fonts. But before you do, you can see, like I said, I've got four different font variations on here. I'm not using the light font, so let's get rid of it. I'm not using this extra bold, so let's get rid of it. There's no point having fonts installed that you don't use. Much better to do this when you're designing the site than retrospectively, but you can do it. And obviously, you can upload the font again if you need to. And most builders will fall back to the nearest version of that particular typography, and it will sort of still work anyway. Just might not look exactly how you set it up. So with that being said, let's open these up, remove those true type font versions, get rid of those. And now let's go and find those WAF and WAF2 fonts. Now, if you're using those Google fonts, one of the easiest ways of doing this is the Google Web Fonts Helper. Link in the description down below. There are other sites that do the similar kind of thing. So we use using Barlow. We know that. So let's just do a search. There's our Barlow. We can click on it. Now, this will show us all of the different weights and the variations, so your italics and so on. Now, all we need to do is choose what we actually want. So if we take a quick look, we've got the 400 and the 600. So let's come back in. Let's choose the 400, which is in this case is the regular, and we want the 600. I'm not worried about italic and so on. We're not using those. So once we've selected what we want, now we can simply come down and say to download those files. Now, if we open the folder where they've been downloaded and unzip them, you'll see what we have now is the Barlow 600 and the normal regular in the WAF2 format. We haven't had to go through and optimize things and mess about with anything like that. We literally have those two WAF2 font versions downloaded for us. So all we need to do is go back to our site, back into our font management, and upload them. So our 400, let's just choose that. I've got a folder for fonts, so I'm simply going to upload those files here. There's my fonts uploaded. There's my regular. I'll select that from the list. I'll do the same now for the semi-bold version, the 600. Select that from the list, and we're just going to simply click Update. We now have the WAF2 versions of those fonts uploaded. So if we quickly go back to our Pingdom results, you can see our fonts originally were 265 kilobytes. If we take a look at those WAF2 format versions, you can see 22 and 21, so 43 kilobytes. We've already saved over 200 kilobytes just by getting rid of the old legacy format in TrueType fonts and getting rid of the fonts we don't actually use, so they don't need to be loaded. So let's run a fresh test now with our newly optimized version. So we'll drop in the URL, and I'll set this to be closest to me, which is London, hit Start Test, and see what results we get back. So as you can see, it's very easy to streamline your typography, your fonts, and everything else inside whatever tool you're using. By removing the fonts you don't actually need, by replacing the older legacy versions of those fonts with a WAF or WAF2 format, reducing the file size, we've saved over 200 kilobytes on a very simple setup. Now multiply that where you have additional multiple fonts. This may save you quite a lot. These are all things that are going to help you speed up your website and get that near perfect score. As always, all applicable links are in the description down below. If you have any feedback, let me have those in the comment section. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.